Well, celebrities are lining up to sing the praises for Kamala Harris during her interview with Oprah Winfrey. Have a look. This has been overwhelming mm. to have the privilege to sit in and, and listen to the testimony of the people here. Mm. Um, hello, President Harris. No, oh. Yeah. <laughs> kind of going from um, uh, a stop Trump mode into a go Kamala mode, the people starting to, you know, yeah. really hear what she's yeah. about. I just wanna, I wanna bring my daughters to the White House to meet this black woman president. Sky News contributor Kosha Garda joins us now. Kosha, so Kamala's now got the endorsement of Taylor Swift, Meryl Streep, Oprah, but most voters don't necessarily follow what Hollywood stars think, do they? They do not. Uh, it comes across as a little bit, I think, out of touch. Shari, what this election from an issue set perspective is all about, as you know, is the economy, inflation, price of, at the gas pump, food on the table, uh, and security, crime, and the border. And people coming out of Beverly Hills and uh, wherever they were Skyping in from doesn't do anything to move the needle in terms of voters' minds on those issues in those states. Oprah does have a little bit of sway still with suburban women voters, which is a group that uh, Trump typically struggles with. So maybe there's something there, but I don't think the celebrities are going to make one iota of a difference. I mean, the contrast between the cost of living crisis being the biggest issue in the United States and you have these multi-millionaire celebrities telling people how to vote. I don't know. I think a lot of people People in the Rust Belts would shake their head at that. Um, meanwhile, the Democrats have suffered a blow in Michigan. This is obviously a key swing state. The mayor of the Muslim majority city has endorsed Trump. Uh, Kosher, how concerned are both of the parties about Michigan? I think this is quite significant. So Michigan, for uh, a long time, is a, is a key state. Trump won it in 2016, and that hadn't happened in 40 years since Ronald Reagan. He won it versus Hillary Clinton, and then lost it narrowly against Biden. So Michigan, in many ways, is a bellwether state, and it does have a significant Muslim population. And the the whole the war in Israel and Gaza and that issue has been a big fracturing fault line issue in the Democrat Party. She Kamala has tried to walk the line with that. But I think this is quite significant because it, it is showing a little bit of the fracturing of that base in those counties. And if Michigan were to swing the other way, I think that spells trouble for her. Yeah. Donald Trump, meanwhile, has ruled out running for another election if he does lose in November. But either way, Kosher, the MAGA movement will, I mean, it has permanently changed the Republican Party. Yes, I think Trump's legacy has been embossed, I would say, on the Republican Party, even though understandably at 82, he probably wouldn't be seeking to do this for what would be a fourth time. He has remade the policy platform. He's paved the way for the MAGA type people from Vivek Ramaswamy to J.D. Vance to others. And, you know, even just the courts that he appointed, the federal judges, they're going to be on the bench for 30 to 40 years and uh, he and Mitch McConnell together reshaping the federal court is another lasting legacy from Trump. So even though he doesn't run personally, I think the Republican Party has forever been changed. Yeah, indeed it has. And, and of course, we are seeing polling that looks like Kamala Harris has stretched her lead against Trump. This is the latest NBC News poll among registered voters um, and her popularity also surging 16 points since July. But look, we, we just don't know yet. I mean, the polls are always up and down. The polls never predicted Trump's win against Hillary Clinton. So still a couple of months to go. Kosha Garda, thank you very much for your time tonight.